welcome to Joe Today. I'm Zizi Pondebu. Scientists from the RAN Water Analytical Services are constantly testing our water to make sure that it meets safety requirements. RAND water turns natural surface water into safe potable water en masse. To do this, it has a water quality monitoring program based on strict standards. In South Africa, we use a standard called the South African National Standard 241, which is what we call the SAND Standard 241, and that measures water quality against about 57 determinants. All those determinants are tested in a laboratory. Randwater Analytical Services is the laboratory site for Randwater. It basically houses the laboratory that does the water quality testing. Now, very importantly, the SAND standard is actually benchmarked against the World Health Organization standard, and this is why we can say that we comply with international standards when it comes to water quality. Based in Vereniging, Randwater Analytical Services tests samples from as far away as Harry Smith in the Free State and Rustenburg in Northwest. Water is tested on a regular basis, on a daily basis, especially in the case of indicator pathogens, seven days a week. We provide approximately a million data sets per year in terms of water quality. So that is very rigorous testing in terms of supporting water quality. Analytical services employs state-of-the-art technology in their work. We use the best technologies available both in the chemistry laboratory as well as in the biology laboratory. All of the technologies we use are amongst the latest and provides the lowest detection that we can possibly achieve in the laboratory. Biological contamination refers to the levels of bacteria and chemical contamination to levels of harmful chemicals impacting on human health. Work being done at Randwater Analytical Services compares favorably to that being done by reputed uh, institutions across the world. Not only do we benchmark our standards nationally, we also benchmark our standards globally. So the water is tested not just to the SANS 0241 standard, which is a national standard, but we also benchmark to EPA standards, US standards, Australian standards, as well as the World Health Organization standards. I think the, the track record of RAND water uh, in excess of 110 years speaks for itself. We've had no major water quality incidents. Uh, one of the major contributors of uh, water concern, especially on the continent, is that of cholera. Uh, we've had no such incidents, simply because the, the program is very rigorous and ensures that the water is of both safe and healthy quality when it is delivered to the consumer. Now, if one thing is clear, at Rand Water Analytical Services, water is, well, not just water. Marisa de Clerc, Joburg Today. Hi, my name is Kimisha and you're watching Joburg Today. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, that's joburgtoday.tv. Follow us on Twitter, at joburgtoday. And if you're one of those people on the move, then pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an I. Joburg is known for its trees, and we took a visit to Bits to find out a little bit more about a special one. We're here at the Witz Blue Gum Tree, one of the oldest and largest trees in Johannesburg. Initially, we said the tree was from the early uh, 1900s, but subsequently, uh, the opinion is that it is older. It's probably from the 1880s. The tree is 32 meters high. It's got a width of 38, nearly 39 meters, and the girth, uh, the circumference at the base of the tree is seven and three quarter meters. It's not the biggest in Gauteng, it's the biggest in Johannesburg. The biggest tree in Gauteng is the Wonderboom in Pretoria, and this is the second biggest tree. The tree is on the University of the Witwatersrand's West Campus on a, a, an open space called the Gavin Rayleigh Green, and uh, as you can see it's very used by students. In the 1880s when uh, uh, mining started in Johannesburg around about 1886 blue gums were brought to South Africa um, as an experiment for props in the mines and uh, that's why there is quite a lot of blue gums in this area. Champion tree was, uh, uh, was started by the Department of Water Affairs in 1998 and the idea was to preserve trees of national interest, um, trees of exceptional size or age 
and they have got some historical uh, interest. Being a, a champion tree, we're not allowed to touch it, we're not allowed to even prune it without permission, but it gets watered and you'll notice that there's a mulch around the base of the tree, which we hope to help the tree as well. Champion trees such as this one are an asset to our country and we should really appreciate them. I'm Sphere Matebula for Joburg Today. Hi, my name is Gemma and you're watching Joburg Today. With all the trees and plants in Joburg, it's important to know which ones help and harm our environment. Alien invasive species are a very big problem in the city of Johannesburg and because we are the largest man-made forest, they consume a lot of our water. We're here at the Wits Insect Tree to find out more. Invasive means that they are able to move around the country on their own and that means that they've escaped from cultivation and they move into natural habitats and they transform those habitats. Basically humans that have moved plants around the world for the last 300 years when commerce exploded that's when our alien problem exploded. Nationwide, we're interested in their consumption of water. And the figures vary, but we've calculated that they use between seven to 4% of the mean annual runoff. And that's why it's valuable for us to control them. The government has got a spectacular program in operation. It's called Working for Water. And it's something that we as all South Africans should be really, really proud of. They spend over two billion rand a year taking out alien weeds. What we're doing here is we're trying to introduce biological control agents which won't eradicate the plants but they will suppress the population to a manageable level and we will introduce them wherever we can to try and suppress aliens in the city. Now jacaranda is a very nice example because that's actually a category three um, species which means that you can grow it but you shouldn't propagate it and you shouldn't grow it within 30 meters of a drainage line. But on the other hand, there's a plant like Lantana that many people have in their gardens because it flowers beautifully, it attracts insects, which, and then it attracts birds with its fruit. But it is without doubt the worst terrestrial weed of the subtropics. And the way you can get involved is go onto those sites and look and see what is in my garden and what am I harboring as a pest and what can I do about it. And there's a website called invasives.org.sa and they will list everything. It goes from fish to birds to plants. So this plant here is uh, a solanum. It's called bugweed. This one unfortunately has found its way here probably because the flowers, and these are still buds at the moment, it has very pretty little purple flowers um, and it's quite an interesting plant. It has these furry leaves as well. This is an incredibly common weed along the roadsides of um, Johannesburg. If it's in your garden, again, you've got to tear it out. It's a category one weed. Um, and it has two biocontrol agents on it. The lace bugs that we looked at in the laboratory uh, is are one of the agents. And the other is uh, there's a tiny little weevil that attacks the flowers. And again, if, if you can't rip it out, look for the agents and spread them around. And in fact, that would be a key issue. If we could get the general public to spread agents, that would help our job enormously. I'm Spio Matabula for Joyville Today. Sky and you're watching Joe Book today. <laughs> for more on the city, check out our playlist as well as business destination Joe Book. That's it for me, ZZ4. I leave you with Deep Fried Man, White Boy Blues. Back in ETV. Woke up this morning in a Tuscan villa. Our president still isn't Helen Zilla. I'm scared this country's turning into the next Zimbabwe, so I spend my time looking for clues. I think I've got a bad, bad case of them white South African blues. They say I'm privileged. And I guess that's true But I pay my taxes And I don't see nothing improve The electricity price is outrageous 
and it's going up by 15%. And my neighbor Yanni says all the money's just gonna go towards Mola Bola for our president. It seems our way of life is under attack. My garden is from Malawi, they sent him back. And every time my domestic worker rearranges my closet, I can't find my shoes. I'm no closer to finding a cure to these white South African blues. There's a poor selection of organic veggies at Pick and Pay. I'd rather go to Woolies, but I'm meant to stay away. Their economic equity policy makes me so mad I could phone into 702. Well, is there any wonder that this white boy is feeling blue?